بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد as we mentioned and we've mentioned on countless occasions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us to hold on to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala قال سبحانه وَاَعْتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us with ijtima' in being one community وَاَعْتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ hold on all of you steadfast to the rope of Allah وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negates uh, dividing into groups and sects and holding on to the rope of Allah Taala, as the Mufassireen describe is holding on to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and various groups and sects have divided the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for various reasons we, we've mentioned some of the main reasons like ignorance, like following their desires like following uh, the opinions and explaining the deen, the religion and uh, you know following their their leaders and, and so forth over the nasus of the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam some of the main sects, the early sects in Islam and where they deviated, groups like the Khawarij and the Shia, the Jahmiya, the Qadariya, the Ashaira, and other than them. And groups like the Khawarij and the Murjia, for example, where did they go astray? They went astray with the issue of Iman. Whereas the Khawarij, they believe that Iman is either complete or it's non-existent. And this is also in agreement with the Murjia. The difference is the Khawarij, they declare the people who do major sins to be disbelievers, to have left the fold of Islam. So, for example, the person who drinks alcohol or commits adultery or fornication to the Khawarij, they regard those people as having no faith, as disbelievers. And the Murjia are the opposite, whereas they believe that the person who is their Iman, their Iman is either complete, but they believe that deeds do not enter into the description of Iman or the definition of Iman or faith. So for example, the person who drinks alcohol or the, a person can do any action, even if it's an action that takes them out of the fold of Islam, but the Murjia believe that they're still uh, believers. As long as they say the Shahada on their tongue and they believe in Islam in their heart, that they're still believers. So both of those groups have went astray with regards to the issue of Iman, whereas Ahlul Sunnah believes Iman fluctuates. That a person can be a believer, but weak in faith. For example, they do sins, they drink alcohol, they maybe commit adultery, but they're still a believer. They're just weak in faith. And they only leave Iman and leave Islam if they begin to make that sin lawful. They begin to declare the sin that they've engaged in to be halal. For example, the person who believes drinking alcohol is permissible for them. They say, I know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, declared khamr, haram. And the Prophet sallallahu had prescribed punishments for, uh, and, and the Quran uh, punishments for the person who drinks alcohol and is drunk. However, it's okay for me then this person has made the unlawful lawful. And this is something that will take a person out of the fold of Islam. So Ahl Sunnah is in the middle. Ahl Sunnah is not like the Khawarij who makes takfir for people doing the major sins, nor are they like the Murjia who say that a person can never, uh, that, that um, deeds are not a part of Iman because deeds are a part of faith. So a person cannot just say, I'm a Muslim and do any and everything and be complete in faith. 
Then you have groups like the Jahmiya and the Mu'tazila and the, Asha, the, Ash, uh, the Ashaira and the Maturidiyya and, and others that they believe that sifat, the characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they go astray in the sifat and that la asma'i wa sifat. Whereas Ahl Sunnah doesn't negate the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nor do they distort the meanings. They take the meanings by their apparent meaning which is in accordance with the Qur'an and the Sunnah and the understanding of the Salaf al-Saleh and in accordance with the Arabic language whereas those other groups they go astray and they distort change the meaning or actually negate the meaning of many of the divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then and before them was groups like the Qadariya the Qadariya they went astray in the Qadr they believe Although the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala first and foremost throughout the Quran told us about Iman bi Qadr. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked about what is Iman. And he said, in tu'minu bi Qadri khayrihi wa shar. And it's to believe in divine destiny, the good of it and the evil of it. Or Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's divine decree. So the Qadriya, they negate the Qadr of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And a group from amongst them actually believes that the slave has no choice, that everything, uh, that the slave is forced to do what they are, uh, what they do. For example, if a person commits sin, they say, no, he was forced to do it, so he's not held accountable. Because if he was held accountable, then that would not be justice from Allah. So all of these are false beliefs which go against the belief of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, who believes that the good and the evil, everything was created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we have a, uh, an aspect of free will. We have limited free will where we're able to make choices and we're responsible for our choices. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the choice between khair and and we are held accountable for our sins and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all aware of what we do and he's the creator of the heavens and earth and he has knowledge of everything that is and everything that will be and everything that could have been subhanahu wa ta'ala and then you have groups like the Shia and the various forms of the Shia sect like the Rafida, those people who make takfir of the Sahaba and they have so many ways in which they go against Ahl Sunnah and the belief, the orthodox belief in Islam, that this is not the time nor the place of mentioning. But some of the things they do is, for, for one, they uh, make takfir of most of the Sahaba of the Prophet Sallallahu They accuse Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha of, of adultery. And they also believe in the... Uh, the infallibility of their imams. They also believe that the Khalifat should only have been with Ahl Bayt. That they consider the Khalifat of Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman to be illegitimate and they only affirm the Khalifat of Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhum. They believe that those other Khulafa Rashidin radiallahu ta'ala anhum majma'een uh, were actually have usurped uh, the Khalifat which should have belonged to Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in. So they have many distortions in creed uh, with regards to uh, the Orthodox creed. And these are just some of the ways. They also believe in the distortion of the Qur'an and that the Qur'an is not perfect and it, is, it has been distorted by the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in. This is also false, falsehood and kufr and disbelief. And this is how some, is some of the ways in which the Rafidah, Shia, went astray. And these are just some of the, some of the main groups, the original sects that broke away and fell under the Hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he said if Tarakatil Yahud ala Ita was Sarain Firka, with Tarakatil Nasara ala Ita Natain was Sarain Firka, was a Taftariku Hadi Umal ala Tarata was Sarain Firka, Kulla Haf and Nar el Wahida Kulna, men here Yarasullah Kalam and Kana ala Mithli, Uma Kana ala he was Habi al Yom. And this is the hadith in which the Prophet ﷺ described that the Ummah would break into 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. And the companions asked, who are they, Ya Rasulullah? He said, those who are upon what I'm upon and what my companions are upon. 
radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in. And we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us and blesses us with ikhlas, with the bad, and protects us from going astray and being a part of division in the ummah. And may Allah bless us to be a part of bringing the ummah back together based upon the correct creed, based upon the Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the understanding, with the understanding of the Salaf al-Salih, radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in. And we ask Allah the Almighty for our good and, prote- and to protect us from evil and to forgive us of our sins. وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم